Hi there, I'm Chris Ermides with This Old House. Welcome back to our another episode of our Fairfield County Farmhouse Build, where tons of progress is being made. Let's go inside and check it out. Hey, good morning, Jerry. Hey, Chris, good morning. How are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm good. I see a lot of trucks outside. Yeah, it makes yeah. Makes a guy like got, me very happy, I'm yes, sure. Yes, we got a lot of action now. We just put in the cozy heat fireplace. We've got the plumber running their water pipe. We've got uh, the HVAC running their duct work, and the electrician is starting as well. So we're making a lot of good Things progress. Things moving along. Yeah, we're starting to take shape now, where you can really see the form and the volume. We started with a 12-foot plate height, and we were a little concerned about the volume. We brought it down to 10 foot. We brought the Marvin windows down from 10 to 8 foot. Just make this space feel a little more warm and inviting, because this is going to be where it all happens. The kitchen, the dining, and the uh, family room, all the entertainment all in one spot, especially with that 80-inch uh, uh, Sony TV up there. I think it's going to be perfect. <laughs> That's really nice. Well, what's happening upstairs? Well, we just started uh, working up there. Let's uh, let's see how it's going. All right. So, Chris, I think last time you were here, we're just standing up the walls, and uh, we made a lot of progress. Now you really see the space. Now it's pretty well defined. Oh wow! What a big change. We're standing in a little sitting room that'll serve as the upstairs uh, den for a, a bedroom suite at each end of the house with their own bathroom and closet. And uh, we wanted to bring some natural light into this sitting room, some pocket doors, and found some scraps that we decided to throw in some bunk beds. We got two queens and two twins, and I think it'll be an interesting uh, little room for uh, some grandchildren, maybe. We'll do some shiplap uh, trimming, and uh, we'll make them look pretty nice. It's good use of scrap material. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, we actually just got a delivery of this, some new Ipex pipe. You like to take a look? Absolutely. Brian, come on down. Meet Chris. Chris is Brian Wilton Plumbing. Hey, He's Chris. doing all of our piping, all our plumbing work here, doing a great job. All right. I'll leave you too. I got to go check on something Sounds upstairs. Sounds good. Thanks. So, Brian, what's going on here? The uh, on demand water heaters we're going to be installing. Uh, this is going to bring fresh air in and allow the exhaust out. Okay. Uh, why are these look different than regular PVC that I'm used to seeing? Well, this PVC is actually rated for flue gases. Um, okay. Conventional DWV, drainage waste and vent PVC is not. The manufacturers actually do not want you to use them for uh, venting gas appliances. Why is it black? Um, the black coating is actually uh, one to identify that it's for the gas appliance. It yep. has stickers on it everywhere. Yep. And then also it has a UV um, protectant so that when the pipe is outside the UV light won't break it down. Okay and I noticed that you've got we got two sets we got two pipes here we got two pipes over there and you've already got that one going to one pipe going through the roof. Correct. How is that? So what that is is a concentric fitting it's called mm -hmm. and what it's allowing is one penetration through the roof okay. so that it looks a little cleaner and you have your exhaust pipe the flue gas going out through the center yep. and your intake through the three inch and down here to the appliance. So what do you have left to do? Well, I was just getting ready to make a hole through the roof and get these other two pipes tied in together and out the roof. With the hole drilled in the roof, Brian continues the two pipes so that they will meet with the concentric vent fitting. After cutting each piece to length, he bevels the end so that it will fit snugly into the fitting adds proprietary adhesive to the pipe and to the fitting, then presses the two together until the glue sets in about 30 seconds. He adds an elbow to the end so that it will meet up with a concentric fitting. He sets it level here to help ensure that the pipe will be plumb once it exits the roof. He repeats the process for the return air run of the pipe, then adds the concentric fitting unit through the roof. The final step is downstairs, where elbows connect to the water heaters. Next, we take a look at the home's heating and cooling system. Hey, Bill. Hey, Chris. Right. How are you? Good to see you. Um, Good to see you. This is going to heat this entire house? This is one of three furnaces that are here. Um, okay. This particular one is going to do the master bedroom suite that we're standing underneath right now. Okay. And there's two more, one that will do, handle the rest of the first floor 
and then there's another system for the second floor. So three systems, three instead systems. of one big unit. Correct. Why is that? More control for the end user. Uh, comfort will be better. Uh, you can keep temperatures more even. So this is a 96% efficient furnace uh, with a high efficiency coil. We got a uh, train clean effects. That's 99.98% air filtration rate. Okay. And then outside there's gonna be 20 sear condensers, multi-stage, that is top of the line with train. So very deluxe. And this is gonna do a, uh, hot air and cooling for That's us correct. as well? Yep. Okay. Yep, your hand is on the cooling coil right here. That's what this is? Yep, okay. this is the cooling coil. This would be the gas-fired furnace. So what do we got going on here? Well, you got a two-stage gas valve, you have a two-stage induced fan motor, and they're all controlled by the brain down here. Okay, and the two-stage, what does that mean? Two-stage, so when you're maintaining temperature, chances are this is gonna fire on a low fire heat, okay. and it keeps steady temperatures. Yep. And then when there's time, uh, colder weather, or if the homeowner comes home and bumps it up several degrees, it'll go into a high fire heat. Makes more heat to get to that desired temperature. And you mentioned variable speed. What is that all about? That's correct. Variable speed motor is behind this compartment here. Yep. Very efficient motor. Okay. Um, you could run at half speeds for pennies per hour. And is that the how forcefully the air is coming out of my vent? If it's at a very high speed, it's going to come out very fast. If That's it's correct. at a low speed, it's going to come. It's that simple. It is that simple. And then we can make uh, adjustments through dip switches on it. So if the homeowner thinks it's a little too noisy or forceful, we could always adjust it through dip switches. Okay. For both heat, low fire, high fire, cooling, et cetera. So the comfort level is being monitored by the variable speed of the fan and also by the speed at which it's being, the heat's being created and how hot that air is, is being. That's correct, amazing furnace. Now we head to the roof to install a tubular style skylight, which channels the sun's light into darker spaces below. All right, so here we're installing some sun tunnels from Velux, and they're a variation of a skylight, little simpler design, and there's a couple different types. On this type, we're actually doing this flush surface one where it doesn't protrude too high up. So there's other styles with a dome. From underneath, we'll connect to another tube that will reflect the light all the way down into the space. And we can actually, we can maneuver those, uh, that tube to move the light into different spots. All right, so we saw the top piece go in. What's next, Jerry? Well, in this case, it's a very short run, and we'll be able to get natural light in a 18-inch uh, you know, space. When we get up to there, we'll have a six-feet run. So with, with this particular uh, hard pipe, hardscape, this offers the most natural light. Each section is connected by spring-loaded clips, and then the joint is sealed shut with aluminum tape. All right, with the, uh, with the tunnel in place, sheetrock goes next, gets cut out, then we put this in, and it'll be done. Next time, we set a soaking pool, install the insulation, and add board and batten siding to the bar. Until then, I'm Chris Hermides from our Idea House build at the Fairfield County Farmhouse. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.